Yeah, I like Pathways. I mean, I think we all we all have a deep affection for it because it was our first successful product. Um, but you know, I, I realized that uh, I mean, we did so much better with Marathon right now, and Marathon so much outclasses Pathways. Yeah, You've been down here already? Club. Whoa! Oh, this really looks terrible. Welcome to an in-depth playthrough of Bungie's Marathon Trilogy, Marathon, Marathon 2 Durndal, and Marathon Infinity. This video series will cover all sorts of stuff on the Marathon Trilogy, ranging from strategy, story, easter eggs, and so on. To start off with in this video, I would like to cover a brief overview of what exactly Marathon is. The next few videos after this will cover how to play Marathon today, the development of the game, the story from the first game's manual, and then on to the first mission. The purpose of this video series is to take a deep look into the game to understand it as well as we possibly can. About seven months or so ago, I played Marathon for the first time and started studying the game, preparing for this in-depth playthrough. The first time I did an in-depth playthrough was with Myth the Fallen Lords and Myth 2 Soulblighter. People enjoyed it so much that the early day Bungie fans inspired me to create similar videos for other old school Bungie games. This video series on Marathon is intended for everyone ranging from those new to Marathon all the way to those who have played through the game numerous times. What is Marathon? Marathon is a sci-fi first person shooter trilogy released by Bungie on the Mac in the 90s. Pathways in the Darkness may have been Bungie's first commercial success, but Marathon is what really propelled them forward. Many people come back to Marathon today because of its deep and complicated story, as well as the numerous links and similarities to the infamous Halo. Some might have even discovered Marathon because of references in Bungie's current franchise, Destiny. In Marathon, he plays a security officer in outer space who fights against an alien race known as the Four. There are a few AIs on the spaceship the security officer fights on that communicate with the player through text that is read on computer terminals throughout the game. These terminals tell most of the marathon story. The story is so deep that there is a webpage devoted to it that has new discoveries still being made almost 30 years later. Here is what Bungie's Nathan Bittner, who worked on Halo, had to say. One of the things that was most rewarding about the Marathon series was the way the fans poured over the details of the story, analyzing and debating it and eventually expanding it beyond what we originally had written. Two years after we shipped the third in the series, Marathon Infinity, we could still check out third party sites to find out the new developments that were in the Marathon world. It was a blast. That taught us that a complex story reaps benefits long after players have played through the game, and that's very much our intention with Halo. Is Marathon just another Doom clone? A lot of FPS games in the 90s were called Doom clones. In that time period, the terms first person shooter and Doom clone were almost interchangeable. It is undeniable that Doom had a tremendous influence on Marathon. At the time, Bungie was still in its infancy stages while ID Software was near its peak as a company with the release of Doom and Quake. ID Software is of course still a tremendously successful company today, but they are most well known for the games they released in the 90s. Before I delve into some of the main differences between the games, here are a few quotes from Bungie staff about the comparison. Doom probably has better graphics, but we have a better physics model, I think. Our networking is a lot more fun. 
Doom is probably faster because of the PC hardware and has more of an arcade feel to it than Marathon does because of the story we have in the game. And here, a few Bungie members in response to an Angels of Cool interview when comparing Marathon to ID Software next game. The question, what about Marathon Infinity will blow Quake away? Rob McLeese replied, once again, the fact that there is a storyline. Alex Ropian replied, Infinity has a very strong storyline plot as well as excellent networking features. There are a lot of levels designed just for net play and many network game types, like kill the man with the ball, etc. The stuff is cool. Also, Infinity has an editor in it. Our editor is very good. We made it commercial quality product. It isn't just a hack. I think a lot of people will like that. I'm not trying to convince people that Infinity has a better engine than Quake, but from what I've heard on the net, Infinity is much more playable and coherent as a game experience. I think you'll have more fun with it. Doug Zartman replied, What is this Quakes? Thanks Doug for the explanation. We already talked a little bit about the story, which was one of the biggest differences between Marathon and Doom. Doom was lacking in story. Each mission in Marathon has a sort of objective and generally has a purpose, which was not the case in Doom. As Jason Jones pointed out, Marathon has less of an arcade feel, although it is not necessarily realistic. In Marathon, players actually had to look down and up at enemies in order to shoot them, and also players could travel above and below enemies. It had more of a sense of 3D space as hallways could go above and below each other. Marathon also featured space-like physics where your momentum will carry you. This causes the player to float off ledges throughout the game, giving you a unique feel to the game movement. Also, it is nice to see an enemy fly back with a killing blow from a punch or from a rocket launcher. Marathon did a couple of things for the first time ever in video games. According to the Guinness World Records, Marathon was the very first FPS to have mouse free look in a 3D environment. It was a bit broken in the first marathon as the game would not allow you to move forward and mouse look down simultaneously. This was fixed in Marathon 2 however. Marathon was also tied with Rise of the Triad as the first FPS to feature dual wielding pistols. Dual wielding became a big part of Bungie with Marathon 2 and Marathon Infinity and also later on with Halo. Now I am certainly not suggesting that Marathon was a better game than Doom, however it is more than just a Doom clone. Most would consider Doom objectively better than Marathon, and it is in many regards. Marathon is definitely much more suitable for an in-depth playthrough like this one though. Let me know if you agree in the comments. What is the Marathon symbol? The Marathon symbol appears on the game boxes and on the main menu and throughout the game. This symbol is used throughout the infamous Halo also. There is a long thread on the story page with tons of similar symbols used throughout the web. Luckily a fan was able to track down the artist about what the symbol represents. I designed the icon to represent a world within a world. Marathon the spaceship was being built inside a hollowed asteroid. Well there you have it. Fans of my channel will be happy to know that the Marathon symbol appears on Bungie's Myth 2 netmap going to town. This map was created by Bungie, but did not make the Myth 2 release. Where does the name Marathon originate? Marathon is the name of the ship which much of the first Marathon game is played on. Near the end of the first game's manual is a historical reference concerning the word's origin. It is a reference to the battle in the plains of Marathon, which is also where the idea of running a marathon originates. Here is what the Marathon manual has to say about this historic event. In 490 BC, the Persian king Darius landed 20,000 cavalry, infantry, and archers on the plain of Marathon and established a defensive beachhead where he intended to destroy the Greek forces before conquering Athens. The Greek general Multiades, leading 10,000 infantry, learned that the Persians were resting and watering their horses while awaiting the Greek attack. Multiades decided to forego the standard slow phalanx formation and charge the troops at a dead run across the plain. Before the Persians could react, the Greeks were inside their archer's range. The Athenian infantry had superior armor and melee weapons, and the lightly armored Persians, without archery and cavalry support, 
were butchered. The Greek soldier Fidipides ran the 26.2 miles from the plains of Marathon to Athens, where he announced the Greek victory before dying. Darius retreated to his ships and sailed directly for Athens. Multiades, guessing the Persians' intent, led the Athenians on an overnight forced march to the city. The next morning, the Persians' fleets arrived at Athens to find the Greek army waiting for them. The Persians turned and fled. In all, the Persians lost 6,400 men, the Greeks 192. Contrary to custom, the Greeks buried their dead on the plain of Marathon to commemorate the victory. Carnage ratio 1 to 33.33, kills per minute 13.73, lessons applicable to the game, move fast, seize the initiative, wield superior firepower, dive into the melee, anticipate enemy movements, slaughter the defenseless, endure. What are Marathon's sources of canon? The main obvious sources of canon are the three game manuals and everything in the game which primarily consists of the terminal screens. The less obvious canon sources are the strategy guides and the lost network packets. The lost network packets consist of a couple of emails from the Bungie staff to the Marathon story webpage at marathon.bungie.org. One of the main purposes of the lost network packets was to fix some of the errors and dates in the first Marathon game that were found to be in conflict with each other. I will try to point out some of the dates in game that were corrected by the Lost Network Packets and show you how they are in error. It was originally intended for the Lost Network Packets to be incorporated into Marathon 2, but that never ended up happening. Either way, they have importance and I will be covering them fully at the end of the first Marathon game. The first Marathon's official strategy guide has some information about items, weapons, enemies, and so on. There was not much lore in the strategy discussion for each mission. There was also an official strategy guide for Marathon 2 Durandal that came as an HTML document on the Marathon Infinity CD. This strategy guide doesn't tell us much from a lore perspective as it primarily just gives a few strategies and then has a description for each mission. The author has acknowledged several errors in this strategy guide and these errors were never fixed. The most interesting thing about the Marathon 2 strategy guide is there were a couple of damage tables for the various weapons in Marathon 2 and Marathon Infinity. I'll take a closer look at these numbers as we might be able to learn a thing or two about them. Another source of information that I'll be taking into consideration are quotes from the creators of the game themselves. These quotes are not necessarily canon, but sometimes they can make it pretty clear what the author was intending. Quotes that are closer to the original release dates are typically more reliable. Well that is it for this video. The next video will discuss how to set up and play Marathon today. I am sure that this is a question a lot of people are going to be asking. If you skip that video because it doesn't pertain to you, I will not be offended. I will look forward to seeing you all next time when we continue Marathon.